Hello everyone, today we will be learning about ORMs and learning about Flask SQL Alchemy. By the end of this tutorial, we will have built a proper database connection that connects Python to MySQL for a blogging app. We will not be building the blogging app, but rather just a database using the ORM Flask SQL Alchemy. They, um, now let's start uh, learning about how ORMs work and what is their purpose. Okay, so let's look at a classic way that code communicates with the database. So there's really only one language that you can use to communicate with your database, regardless of what type of database it is, and that is called SQL. SQL is very fast, it's very complex, and overall the developer has quite a bit of control as to what happens in the database. However, as time goes on, your code be can become less scalable and it can become messy. Also, for some reason, developers just don't like SQL. In my opinion, you should learn how to use SQL before jumping into any sorts of ORMs. Speaking of ORMs, let's actually learn how they work. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. What that means is that your code is being mapped onto an object that will then further um, convert the, co the object into SQL code, which can then be executed towards your MySQL database. As a result, because we're using objects, it's very scalable and it's very neat and clean. It's a lot easier to write rather than SQL, and it's a job industry standard. Lots of companies use different types of ORMs, such as most FANG companies and even small startups. However, ORMs, because they use objects and they are calling classes to help convert it into SQL code, they perform a little bit slower. They are also a lot more annoying to learn, in my opinion, and a lot of other people and you are unable to write complex queries, such as if you were to do raw SQL code. Another benefit about ORMs is that you can easily switch between different types of databases without having to change the SQL code. Different, lang different database types, such as MySQL and Postgres, have SQL queries, however, are slightly different depending on which one you pick. With an ORM, you can just switch the type of database that's being used with a simple ch like what with one or two lines. Okay, now let's explore how, <clears throat> sorry, now let's explore how um, we will be coding our ORM models. Okay, so we will have a file called models.py that will contain the basic DNA structure of our database. We will be importing our ORM here and building out the DNA. Then what will happen is that we will have another file called app.py that will import these models. We will be exploring that in the next video, but it's good for you guys to have a basic understanding right now. When that happens, the models.py will connect to the database or build the database if it does not exist. Then what happens is that in your app.py, the user or the developer will have certain queries. That will be ORM queries, not SQL queries. But those ORM queries will then be converted into SQL, which will be then passed into our database. Okay, now let's start coding. Okay, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create our schema for our database. The name of our database is gonna be called ORMDB. You can name it whatever you want, I could care less. Okay, now, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create a file called models.py. Okay, I'm just gonna open up my uh, repository. Okay, I have models.py opened here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import certain libraries, okay? The first library that we're going to imp have to import is Flask. This is because Flask SQL Alchemy is, um, is, is basically a mix of the SQL Alchemy library and Flask. So from Flask, import Flask, okay? Um, the next thing we're going to want to import is our SQL Alchemy library. So we're going to go from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. Okay, and if you don't have this downloaded, just use a simple pip install Flask SQL Alchemy and that should work. Because we're using MySQL, we also need a MySQL connector. So we're gonna use import pi MySQL. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is connect to our database. So first of all, let's just, um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just create uh, four variables. That's going to have our host name, our username, the password, and the database. Okay. Uh, so the my host is localhost. That's because this is on my local machine. 
Okay. The username for mine is just root. So whatever the username for yours is, just put that in there. Okay. The password for mine is, uh, what is it again? Uh, new underscore password. Yeah. New underscore password. Okay. And the database name, which we already discussed, is just going to be called database ORM or ORMDB. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is create an instance of Flask. The reason why we're creating an instance of Flask is so that our SQL Alchemy can then connect. Okay, so to create an instance of Flask, we're just going to make a variable called app, and it's going to be equal to Flask and our environment name. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is configure a SQL Alchemy, uh, configure SQL Alchemy into our app. So we're going to be like app.config app.config and we're just going to go sql alchemy underscore database underscore uri okay so what we're doing now is configuring our flask app and, and we're giving it a url for where our our database is located so depending on what database you're using it's going to differentiate the way you're going to write the address but for this one, it's going to be MySQL plus the Py, uh, Py MySQL library. We're doing this so that it has the necessary dependencies so it doesn't crash. Okay. Two forward slashes plus the host or actually the user, first of all. Okay. Then we're going to want to insert the password. Okay. Plus password. Okay plus the at, and it's going to be at whatever your host is. So for mine, it's a local host because it's on my machine, as I said again. Okay, so plus host. All right, uh, plus the uh, slash database, slash database. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is check to, um, the next thing we're going to want to do is set the track modifications to false. You might be wondering what the hell is a track modification. A track modification is simply just each time there's like a change in the database, it's going to constantly like bug you that, oh, something happened. And that's pretty annoying. All right. So that's why I'm just going to set that to false. So it's going to be SQL Alchemy. Is that, is that spelled right? Well, let me just. Yeah, that's no, spelled incorrectly. Okay, there we go. SQL alchemy underscore track underscore modifications. All right, and just set that equal to false, a simple Boolean. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is create an instantiation of SQL alchemy. Because even though we have it like set up in our uh, Flask app, we don't have the SQL alchemy created. All right, so we're just going to create an instance of it called DB, which is equal to SQL alchemy. And it's going to take in the argument of app. So now SQL Alchemy is directly connected to the Flask app. Okay, now if we were to just run this, nothing should happen. Oh no. Oh, I forgot the plus. All right, now if I were to just run this, yeah, as you can see, nothing happened. All right, so that means that everything has successfully connected. Okay, now the next thing we're going to want to do is set up our tables. So the way that uh, an ORM framework works is that it uses mainly object-oriented programming. This is the case for at least Python. Okay, so we need to create two classes that inherit from the database models that are provided from the framework. Okay, so we're using two classes because we have two tables, but depending on the number of tables, you will have to add more or less classes. So we're going to have two classes. One is going to be called the users and the other one is going to be called the posts okay so class user and it's going to inherit from db.model okay so now that we've inherited from db.model we can now use the orm's uh, assets or the tools and integrate them with our models.py so we want to create two rows all right the first row we're going to want to create is called the username okay and the next, okay, the next one we're going to want to create is called password. Password. 
Okay, now let's just work with the username first. Okay, so we're just gonna make a db.column. Okay, so now we've told the compiler to create a column of, called username. And then we need to specify what is the column. Is it a string? Is it a integer flow, blah, blah, blah. So db.string, and it's gonna be the length of the string. So mine's 255, okay? The next thing we wanna, we can specify more things such as, should it be a unique value? So in a blogging app, you don't want people, like two people with the same username because that would run into errors. So yeah, it has to be unique. And we also need a primary key. A primary key is something in a database that is used to connect tables together. I will further explain that more later. So primary key is equal to true. Uh, let me actually just, okay. Now for password, we're gonna create another column. So db.column and it's gonna be db.string and it's gonna be another 255 character long. All right, and it's gonna be a unique, or no, it doesn't have to be a unique string, all right? So we're just gonna leave that as is, okay? Oh yeah, another thing we need to specify in our username that I forgot to tell you guys is whether or not uh, a column can be nullable. So sometimes in a database, we leave certain columns just like as nothing, and they're meant to be filled out later. But that's often um, not the case for certain values such as the username, right? Because you can't have a user walking around with no username. So we're gonna go nullable is equal to false, okay? And for db dot, for the password, we're also gonna put nullable as false. Nullable is equal to false. Okay, so now what happens is that when we run this code, we will have our user, uh, we will have a column known as username, and it's gonna have a string with a max size of 255 characters. It will be a unique value, and it will be nullable, and it will be the primary key, and same with password, but without the primary key end. It doesn't have to be a unique password. <coughs> okay, now let's build our second, uh, yeah, now we will build our second table. Our second table is gonna be called posts. All right, so we're gonna call it class posts. Okay, db.model. So we need two uh, values over here. One we need is the uh, username and the other one is gonna be the blog test text. Of course, if this was like a real app that I was building, there would be more values to take into consideration, but this is just for the sake of the tutorial. If you guys want, you can pause the video right now and try and build out this table yourself. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you paused it or not, and frankly, I could care less, but okay. So first of all, I'm going to create the username, and the username is going to have the same values as, in fact, I'm just going to copy that in here good old copy and paste. Okay, now, as you so now since there's um, a primary key in two places, and since these two, like the names are the same, these two tables automatically connect based on the username. You cannot have more than one primary key. All right, so by having this primary key, it's a lot more organized to see how these two tables relate with each other. The next uh, value we're gonna wanna have is the block text block text is equal to db.column and it's going to be the db.string with a size of 5000. It does not have to be unique, so we're going to write unique is equal to false and nullable is equal to false. Okay, all right, now, now we finally built out our we finally built out our tables, okay? But now you might be wondering, um, okay, how do we run this, right? How do we build this stuff out? So to do so, we're just gonna go over here, I'm gonna be like db dot, db dot create underscore all. So db dot create underscore all. Okay, now I'm just gonna run this, so. So yeah, as you can see, nothing happened. So that means that there's no errors, okay? And I can even run this again and it won't, cause an error even though I've already built the tables. This is because um, the ORM takes care of these things and it checks to see if it already exists. 
Now let's go back into our SQL uh, workbench and let's see if the tables are created. So let me just quit. Okay, let me just exit this out. And I'm just gonna open up my MySQL workbench. This better work. Okay, I'm gonna open up ORM. And yeah, as you can see, there's two tables. All right, now in, next, in the next tutorial, we will be further building upon this and we will learn how to insert data and import our models to create um, to, to create queries and which will be like deleting, inserting and updating and reading. Okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a nice day.